Okay, a crossband repeater is when you take two radios set at different frequency bands, typically UHF and VHF, and you connect them together, in this case via wire, um, and they will receive at one frequency, transmit at the other, which brings two radios that are separated from that system uh, into link with each other. Now, the typical way to do this is 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I'm not going to do that. I'm using uh, mirrors in GMRS, which by the letter of the rule might be legal, but it might not. Um, this is a Faraday cage in this room. These are set at low power. This transmission is not going anywhere, so I don't need to worry about it. I'm not telling you that you should cross band the GMRS to mirrors. I'm just giving you an example um, because reasons. So. It's important that you don't do this on the same band. You can't do it all VHF or all UHF. It has to be cross-band because it's the separation between UHF and VHF that allow this to work with just a simple wire and no special equipment. When you are repeating on the same band, that requires a lot of special equipment. It's very difficult to do. It's not something you can throw together like this. These are the earpiece wires that came with the two Bofum radios. Okay, so all I did was chop off the earpieces and use the F cables and I spliced them together. I set both of these radios for Vox at a setting of 2 and now when I transmit on one radio that should come through to the other radio. That's how this works. Now the things you'll need to do is take your earpieces that came with the radio and splice it and then put the wires together which I'm going to show you how to do and to test this you need four radios. Now, I'm using the Bofeng radios as the repeater because it has better audio. The Quenchengs, this would work with, but they would make for a really bad repeater because they have terrible audio. They're horrible. But the, the UV-17R has really great audio, which makes it a good repeater. So before I demonstrate it and then show you the wiring diagram, I just want to give you like a case use. Generally, cross-banding is used for an example like, let's say I'm in my house and I'm transmitting on low power, and I have a, a, another radio in my house. I can transmit from the radio that I'm using to the radio in my house at the same frequency band, same, same exact frequency. This radio is connected to this radio, which is in my house, but this is connected to the big antenna outside my house that's up 30 feet. Just this one, not this one, just this one. Now, from in my house, I can talk to this radio, which goes out to this radio, and then someone in my family who is out and about on this radio will be able to communicate back to this radio using the big antenna outside and then bring that into the house to talk to me at this radio. The reason we do this is mostly for the benefit of, of that tall antenna. If you can get one of your crossband repeaters up high then you're getting a better signal spread but also you get to choose is the VHF or UHF more appropriate for if I'm in the house or is it more appropriate for out, out and about. If I'm out in open country, I would use uh, VHF as my um, outside radio and UHF as my inside radio because the UHF works really good to penetrate inside buildings and walls, whereas the lower frequency VHF is good for long distances where there's not a whole lot of obstruction. So you sort of build it depending on what your, case, your use case is. So what should happen now that I've got these two wired using nothing but the earphone pieces that they came with? Um, if I transmit from one radio, you should hear it out on the other, and I'm going to have to get away from here to make that work because they'll just screech at each other if I try to do this otherwise. So let's... All right, and there's our crossband. And here we are. So that worked. So basically, when someone out and about on this radio transmits, they're going to get to this radio, which is going to go to this one, which is going to talk to me. I did all this with just the stuff that came with it. Now I did a really crappy job of making this wire. I'm going to show you uh, a graphic of what to do with this wire. The radio noise that you hear is because I'm triggering, I'm triggering the Vox system, um, which means I did a really bad job with this. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And both of these guys are set to Vox, setting 2. doesn't matter if these are set to Vox because you're using PTT on them, but these have to be set to Vox, and I use 2 seems to work pretty well to get the background noise out of there, but still trigger pretty easily. All right, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. When you open up the cable, you're going to find that there are four wires sticking out, and you're going to splice all of those wires open. What I'd recommend is, since these wires are so cheap and they use the least amount of material, there's only a few strands of copper in there. And so um, what they do to bulk it up is they wrap it in fiber. So what I do is, after I get all of the wires um, 
spliced. I then take a cigarette lighter and I just burn off all of that extra fiber that they put in there to insulate everything. And that's going to leave you with some very tiny wires, uh, a set of four different tiny wires. Now, what I will recommend to avoid the mistake I made is when you splice these out and you remove the insulation from the four wires, do it at different lengths so that the wires can't overlap and sort out. So if you just splice it different lengths from the... Um, from the from each wire then you can kind of like avoid the metal from touching each other when you reassemble everything just something to keep in mind we're not going to use the gold wire so you'll notice that there's an unprotected uninsulated gold wire you can cut it set it aside we don't need it and all you're going to do is you're going to take the green out of one end of the wire and you're going to splice it to the blue at the other end and conversely you're going to take the blue out of the other end and splice it to the green you're just crossing blue and green and then red to red. So we're just gonna have that mic run straight through red to red, and we're not using gold. So you can get gold out of there, chop it off, don't need it. Now the way I did it in the video that you see is you can see that I kind of used hot glue to bring everything together. And that's because these wires are really, really, really hard to solder. They're not intended for that. So they tend to melt. And so what I did is I just sort of twisted them together and used hot glue to insulate them and to sort of bring everything together you can do a better job than I did. That's just what I did for the purposes of this video. I'm not going to use this cable because it does have a short in it, but that's just because I, I was really dodgy with my work. You could do a better job than that and wrap it in maybe electrical tape when you're done. That's it. Like and subscribe.